Hey there YouTube fans, AC Productions here and today I have a question coming in from a subscriber. His name is Rayleigh Black Mantis and his question is how to get the black screen with the red numbers. Which combination do I need to make it look like the same? Also he says greetings from Mexico. Muchas gracias por los saludos de México and ahorita te voy a enseñar como hacer ese combination que yo hice con mi cage cluster. Now pretty much what I just said is that thank you for the greetings from Mexico and today I'm going to be showing you on how to do that combination that I did on my bike with this video. Now what he's talking about is pretty much this. Gauge cluster that I did which if you saw my previous videos on how to invert your gauge cluster and then how to change the color of your gauge cluster I pretty much put those two together and combined it my inverted gauge cluster with a red filter and then I also put a blue filter on where the RPMs are so let me turn off the lights so you guys can see a little bit better so when it gets uh, when once it hits uh, nighttime this is how my new gauge cluster looks now I'll be showing you pretty much I'll be combining the two videos that I did before if you saw those two videos I'm gonna be, be combining them together in this video to show you on how I actually did this particular installation. And today I'm going to be showing you on how to do an inverted LCD screen. Now if you're wondering what I mean, when we turn on our gauge cluster for our 2015 to 2018 gauge cluster, you notice that the gauges are white. So the background's white here, the background's white here, but the numbers are black. And I kind of just wanted to see for myself if it was even possible to do this for the R3. Okay, now these are going to be the tools that you're going to need for the screen. We'll start over here with the main part underneath all this is the cutting board. So we're going to be needing posty notes put for the screen so we could get our, to make our template so we could actually cut two sides. A microfiber towel so we could rest our gauge cluster on. A cutting board. This has like two blades on it so you can make straight cuts. If you don't have a cutting board, you can use scissors. Next would be a little cloth. This is the one for glasses. If you wear glasses or if you have sunglasses, you could use, you use, normally would use a cloth like this. This is, uh, I would say this is a lot better than, uh, would be more suggested to use something like that compared to a microfiber cloth to clean the gauge cluster. Just due to that sometimes these microfiber cloths can do fine line scratches compared to this will not do that. A Sharpie pen. This is a, a fine point Sharpie pen. An X-Acto blade which is right over here. Some tape and isopropyl alcohol will be used with the cloth towel uh, to clean the gauge cluster. Okay so first things first we're gonna have to remove this panel here. So well actually we're gonna have to remove this panel here to access to this panel. So remove the screw right over here. Remove a screw right over here to remove that panel. After that we're gonna remove this panel right over here and that's gonna be one screw over here one screw over here and on the inside of this panel I'll point it with my finger you probably won't be able to see it with the camera but there is a plastic screw right over here and then there is another one right over here so one two for plastic screws and then the metal ones are out here over here removing this panel also this one here and that one there so let's go ahead and remove all those parts I also forgot to mention that what you want, what you do on one side, you want to make sure you do it on the other side because we have to make sure that we remove both parts to get to that, this area here, which we're also going to be removing as well. All right, guys. So to remove your gauge cluster is pretty simple. All you have to do is just remove these two bolts on each side, which is right there. So if you see that little bolt right there, just go ahead and remove it with your eight millimeter open end wrench or socket. So there's one here on this side and then there's one on the other side. There it is. There's the other bolt right there. So just go ahead and remove those two bolts and that would remove your whole gauge cluster out of its place. And I'll just, just remove the plug behind it. Okay, now that I got the boot removed, you're going to see that there's a little tab right there where my finger is. So push that tab, push it down and then pull out the plug. Okay, once you get the plug off, here is our gauge cluster. All right, guys, I'm going to have to kind of show you the video in kind of this angle just because I don't have the, the space in this direction to kind of show you head on. All right, so next we're going to do is we're going to remove the screws behind here because we need to take apart the, pla the front part of the plastic of the gauge cluster to get access to the inside. So now first things first, we're going to go ahead and remove these three screws. So one, two, and three. After removing those uh, three screws, you're going to notice that there's little smaller screws on the inside. So there is one here, one over here. There is one behind over here, here, 
here, here, and here. As far as I could see uh, with the bracket in the spot. But pretty much you want to remove every single screw that you see back here. And then I'll show you what to do next. Also for, uh, forgot to mention and I think would be a good idea to prevent any scratches. If you don't have any protection like I do uh, with the front gauge cluster. I do have a screen protector on all these pieces. It would be a good idea to get a microfiber towel. And just lay it here on your work table and then face this on the bottom at least you'll know that your front of your gauge cluster won't get scratched okay now that we got all of our screws removed from the gauge cluster now we're gonna go ahead and pull it apart now I'm gonna go ahead and put these little screws off to the side so I don't lose them so you move the camera off to the side a little bit more so you guys can see so let's go ahead and pop this guy off I, oh there we go I guess it was since I've never taken it apart it was actually a little rough as you could see to get it off all right so now that i kind of popped it out i'm just gonna go ahead and face this down actually oh it actually is just the cover and the main part is here okay so i thought the the top part of this was just gonna come off but uh well it did but not from the gauge cluster part all right so this bottom part is just a plastic piece as you guys could see uh nothing there all right so we're gonna put this off to the side so now let's see what's behind here all right so it looks like for us to actually remove uh the backing of this cluster so we're gonna have to go ahead and remove some screws so we're gonna go ahead and remove these two screws so this one here and this one here go ahead and do that and then i think this uh this part of the circuit board of the cage closure should come right out Okay, now that we got those two screws out, now that I removed those two, and it does, it seems to come out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip it over just because I don't want any dust particles to uh, kind of get on the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it out like so. And you wanna make sure you do it carefully. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this off to the side facing downwards. And now we are with the internal part of the R3 gauge cluster. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna get to this part of the gauge cluster. The LCD screen. I'm not sure if I'm able to pop out that needle or not but I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna actually remove those two screws so as you can see just make sure that you're very careful removing this screw here moving the needle a little bit and remove that screw over there so maybe by just by removing those two screws we'll be able to remove this uh, this part off to the side to gain access to the LCD screen and it's actually held a little tab, a little slot over here and over here to kind of hold it in its place. But if you were to lift it up gently and then you're able to actually move it in a, obviously only in a, in a, out of the way in a circular motion like this, we're able to get access to the LCD screen. Okay guys, so I think this is gonna be the most trickiest part is going to be removing the stock filter that's on the gauge cluster. So let's go ahead and move this off to the side. Now it's gonna be really hard to see that, and believe it or not, that there is a filter on here. Let me see if I could uh, show you guys. Kind of right there at the edge, you could actually see that there, that there is a filter. But anyway, the border pretty much shows that this there's a, a screen filter over the LCD display. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our hobby knife and we're gonna do it very carefully. You wanna make sure that you're very careful on doing this part because if you're not, you could actually scratch and damage the display and that's not going to be good at all. So what we're gonna do right now now it's just going to grab our very sharp knife. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab our exacto knife which is right here and then just kind of go very carefully on trying to actually lift up that that little edge of the the filter. So, just make sure that you take extreme careful and and time on doing so. Once you get that little corner up and if possible, once you once you get it up, try to get it with your fingernail and then start peeling it back. That going to be your best bet. So, right now I'm just going to go very carefully along the edges over here see if I could try to peel up as much as I can without going too in depth you don't want to go all the way you know up to here with your razor blade because you can scratch the glass if you do that you're screwed and you're gonna have to get another gauge cluster because it'll be pretty much damaged like I said just try to get the little corner of the of the fil of the the filter and then uh, try to use your thumbnail or whatnot uh, to peel the rest so right I'm gonna pause the video because it's gonna be very time consuming as you can see I'm trying to be extremely careful on removing the stock filter and uh, 
uh, once I get it uh, going, I'll already resume the video so you guys could see the progress. All right, guys, I'm not going to lie, but that was very nerve wracking on trying to get the LCD off or the polarized filter off, which is right over here. You see a little spotting on it just because this is, has adhesive in the back of it. So once I got on it and pulled the edge out, I kind of broke it a little bit over here when I was taking it off and I didn't want to continue ripping it off. So I was going even more taking my time uh, to kind of get it all in one piece. I didn't want to just have a broken piece here and whatever. Uh, I wanted to try to take it off intact as much as possible because of anything were to happen I can still use this and stick it back on the LCD but now that we got it off and the most trickiest part was once it got to this ed edge over here obviously we can't take out the needle at all I tried to see if there was a screw maybe underneath this cover and there isn't any removing this was not an option so I try to do the best I can on actually pulling it and try to get it off I had to like put a little bit of stress on this part but hopefully I didn't damage it so let me see because I didn't want it to I didn't want it to be you know right now it's like that but if I damage it too much it can curve and stay like that so and you can't really bend this back because it's pretty much literally like a piece of cardboard so it doesn't look like it's been deformed at all too much at all i mean it looks a little bit because i could tap it but i think once i put the screws in i think it should be fine and once i put the cluster in it should be fine so that was just pretty much mo the most part of the nerve-wracking experience was to try to do it without really you know damaging this piece so i had to kind of really give it a little bit of stress as i was doing it like that to you know peel this off all right so now that we got this off you do see a spot right over here but that's just the adhesive so what we're going to do is we're going to get our alcohol right here and i would say try to use something that's not abrasive at all i'm going to use this little towelet that i got for cleaning my glasses uh, i don't really suggest using a microfiber cloth because it can do a fine line scratching on the lcd and you definitely don't want that i think this would be a better bet because if it's good enough to clean your glasses without leaving any fine line scratches it'd be good for the lcd screen so i'm going to put a little bit of alcohol here and then just wipe this air down with the little piece of adhesive that's still on there and get it clean and we'll do that next all right so next what we're going to do is we're going to go to over to the bike and we're going to plug in our gauge cluster now the reason this is because like i said here is our polarized lens now if i were to put it over it right now you're going to actually see the transitions so we want to make sure that we get the right transition that we're looking for and i turn it you could see that actually the lcd screen is actually turning black when we turn it gets like a weird color here Turn it all the way right around there. It's clear again, like it was before. Over here, it's kind of a darker color. So we want to make sure that we get the right style for our application. It's kind of hard to get here. Okay, so at this angle, you can see a little better. The clear, so it kind of turns black and then really black. Then it kind of clears up again. And then it gets really clear over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the bike and we're going to be turning our our, uh, our uh, lens filter to our desired look. All right, so enough here. Let's go to the bike and let's see how it looks over on the bike. All right, guys, we're back at the bike. I already plugged in the gauge cluster and I decided to cover off so we could really see what's going on. Now that we got our pol our our uh, factory polarized lens off of the gauge cluster let's go ahead and turn on the bike and put this new one over to find the right display that we're looking for okay go ahead and turn on the bike now you guys want to see something really cool check this out you see obviously there's nothing on the screen even though there's supposed to be numbers and showing you everything that's on there now check it out when i put the polarizing lens on part of the screen now we're starting to see some numbers how cool is that an invincible kind of ink or something on our gauge cluster and i'm just and, and it's just it just blows my mind even in, in like when i'm like looking at in person like I, if i look at it at a specific angle on the in real life i could kind of see some numbers there but you really can't see it unless you're kind of looking at it at a weird angle without the lens but with the lens it actually filters it out and you actually see it so if i would put it in like so now we see the numbers remove the filter you see nothing all right, so I'm going to go ahead and put it a little bit closer and I'm going to start rotating the filter. So right now we have it, it looks to be like at a normal display. All right, so if I start rotating, you can see the numbers are getting darker. 
that's not the look we're looking for so this would be our stock obviously our stock view of the gauges we want to invert the gauges doing an LCD flip inverting the gauge making the white part black and the black numbers white so let's go ahead and keep turning the po linear polarized lens or filter okay Ooh, this that's looking nice that's what we're looking for right there let's see how if we could get it a little bit more darker yes well, I would say right about there looks really good. Just trying to do it where we don't see that one and eight on the on the speedometer. Turn a little bit more. No, now it's getting a little bit lighter. Okay, so I would say right about there. Probably maybe right about there actually. Right about there looks really good from stock look to inverted look. Now that looks cool. All right, guys, so let me uh, find a spot uh, that will show the numbers. I think right about, like I said, right about there, because you let for them want to see it where you can see these two numbers over here. So right at a darker spot, I think this would be perfect right there. Let's see right there. You can see the numbers a little bit. Definitely want more of the other numbers showing. So I think right about there looks about good. So instead of me pausing the camera, I'm just going to, oops, so I dropped it. But I'm going to pause the camera and uh, really put the spot. But what I'm going to show you next is pretty much just to mark it because obviously you can't mark it with your, your dark pen because you're not going to see the lines of where to cut. So what we're going to be using is going to be either you could use painter's tape or you could actually use like sticky pads. Like, you know, little sticky notes. Mark the edges like around here, but on this so we know where to actually cut our filter. I just think this is amazing just to to like go from here to here. You could see <laughs> like invincible numbers. All right, guys. Now, I also forgot to mention, even though I have the display like this, you want to make sure that you put the display how it would be on the bike. So put it at this angle because when I had it over here, everything was looking perfect. But once I figured, I was like, you know what? Let me put it where the gauge cluster would be. And I found I was going to be off. So this is pretty much what I was talking about just to put pretty much mark a template. So when I have put it on there, so if I were to put it on there now, so I could get it on there. So you could see it's already dark and I mark the areas so I know where to cut uh, the polarizing lens or the filter. So you could see I marked over here because that's the edge of where this is and then the top over here and then over here will be the edge of that so I know where to cut. So this will be my little rectangle uh, filter spot. So right there is looking really good. Invert, the inverted uh, display is looking fantastic. So I already marked my template as we could see right here. So, so here it is off the bike. So this is my template. So this is where I'm going to be cutting the polarizing lens. All right, so we're going to go back in and I'm going to go back inside and I'm going to go ahead and cut off the template. And then we're going to go ahead and stick it back on here, but inside over here. And then we're going to make sure and give it a final test before we make anything else. Um, anything else. So this is looking really good so far. And like I said, you want to make sure that you have the gauge in the position where it would have would be because like I said even though over here it looks really good like say if it was right here but one I mean like say we have it really dark here but once you put it where it's supposed to be you notice that it's actually lighter than it was than it was originally you had marked so that's the reason I say that so since I already did that and I had it over here when I was doing my my uh, template part I already marked it so now I put it over here so you guys could see it all right, guys, so let's so let's go back inside. Okay, now that we're inside, here is our polarizing lens. Let's go ahead and remove our uh, face from the gauge. Put that off to the side. All right, so now that I already got my markings. All right, so I had marked that this is going to be our spot right here. So right now what I'm doing is just, even though I had marked it, I had marked it to, you know, the, the actual cutout of the screen. I'm going to actually cut a little bit further up from this spot uh, because actually you could see that the 
the screen is a little bit bigger just because this part actually covers you know part of the screen so i'm going to go ahead and just cut uh, a little bit right above the line on pretty much above uh, all of the sticky tape areas and especially over here cut out a little bit further in because obviously the screen goes further in than from what it shows here and then i'm going to go ahead and you know pre-fit the the filter and the lens filter into this area so it's pretty much what you want to do the same thing so like i said i'm just going to kind of see on where and what how much you know i should you know be um you know cutting and so forth so i'm just gonna go ahead and do it off camera because it is time consuming on this area so i just don't want to take up too much time with the camera and showing you guys all that but i'm just kind of telling you and showing and you know showing you from the sample here of what i'll be doing so you guys could do the same all right so let me go ahead and do that and then i will show you how it, it came out all right so here's a little update of what i just did so pretty much i was kind of like eyeballing it and seeing how much seeing how much on where I should be cutting on the polarized lens filter. So this is the part we marked off because of the borders of this piece. But actually we're gonna be cutting a little bit further up here, further out over here, further down over here, and further out on the left. Just because like I said, the screen is actually a lot bigger than what it shows in our display. So it's better to, to have it stick out more than if you were to cut you know, over here and have less because once you cut it off, you can't put it back. But if we have it, you know, if we had cut over here and we have more sticking out, we could always cut little by little until we actually get it into its spot over here. So just do the same thing. Just mark these areas and then go ahead and start trimming little by little until you actually get it up perfectly into the LED LCD screen area. Alrighty guys, after much trimming and everything on the LCD polarized uh, filter, I think I got it just about right. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the little um, sticky tape or the post-it uh, tape that I had on there. Go ahead and uh, you did the same. So now before we actually do this, just letting you know that this polarizing film actually has a protective film. It has it both on this side and on the other side. So you wanna make sure that you peel both sides off before putting it onto the gauge cluster itself. Now before we do that also, we just want to make sure that we get all our fingerprints off of the screen. We definitely don't want to have any fingerprints when putting everything back because that would uh, pretty be not that great. As you can see, right about right there, you can see there's a fingerprint right there. So we definitely want to get that off. So what we're going to do is going to get our little towelette for cleaning glasses and put just a little dab of alcohol and just go ahead and give the, the LCD screen a good wipe down before putting the polarized lens on there. And at the same time, you know, removing the, the protective film that it has on both sides now just letting you know also that this polarized lens is not adhesive meaning that it does not have any sticky tape or anything on the other end of this what i'm going to do as soon as i put it on there i probably will put a piece of tape or something alongside the bottom which would be alongside over here obviously this part is going to cover it so it'll be towards the bottom so if i were to put it over here right now you can see the yellow part so i'll put it put a little piece of tape over here and then just put it attach it to the bottom over here so that way that the lens doesn't move around when i'm riding the motorcycle everything i I just explained you also want to do for yourself so let's go ahead and uh, get started on that so let me go ahead grab my little towelette get a little bit of alcohol going on it and like i said it doesn't have to be a lot of alcohol just a little dab is all you need so i would say just like like so so i'm gonna go ahead and remove the polarized lens also if you notice that it'd be i also forgot to mention it'd be a good idea to write top on when you're when you're cutting so that way you know which side is the top area but anyway all right so i'm just gonna go ahead and like i said just wipe down the area make sure that you get all of the fingerprints and any dust in debris off of your lcd screen you left and i don't want any fingerprints whatsoever on the lcd screen uh because that will kind of just ruin the look once you put your polarized lens on just go ahead and just give it a nice little wipe down making sure that there is no fingerprints and it is super clear and also if you had any adhesive on there make sure all that's off of the the, the cluster as well all right so while i do that you guys do the same and then like i said remove the on the polarized filter remove the protective film off of both sides i'm going to go ahead and slide it onto the gauge cluster all right so that's how it looks like it looks really good it's nice and uh i would guess clear and shiny i guess uh so but if you could see right over here it's, it's kind of hard to see but you can kind of see the edge right there there's a piece of tape i put and i put a fairly long one i put it at the bottom right where these terminals are at and then i fold it off to the side over here as you could see now that i uh, already press it so that way that this uh 
polarized film is not going to go anywhere once I put it on. All right, so now that you got it on there, you could just go ahead and slide this piece over like so. All right, now that we got everything right on there as well, everything's looking good. If I see in the light, I think I might see some marks. I may go ahead and clean it with a little bit of alcohol and a little towel. Okay, now that we're at this part, now these are pretty much the filters that I have. I have bought. I'll have a link in the description below where I bought these filters. Now these filters are pretty big. I would say probably a 10 by 11 or 11 by 11. So here we have a neon green. After that we have red. Then we have an orange. Then there's purple. A very light pink green blue and this is a color i had before but i thought it was kind of the same red but it actually turns out to be a hot pink now this is going to be one that i'll be adding to this video to show you guys i think it'll look really good on the bike or on the gauge cluster so this is the newest one i already cut a piece out which is right here now pretty much i already had cut out all the pieces from before and this is from my my previous video and as you can see i already have all the filters already out now the newest one which would be this one which is the hot pink and if you didn't see that other video all these filters come with a protect the film on both sides and as you could see in the video you could see right here you could see the shiny part now that's the real that's the real filter now the, the part that's not shiny that's that's the protective film so you want to make sure that you peel off uh, the film so if you would get your fingernail on it there we go so you could see there's the protective film right there you just go ahead grab it and then you peel it off and you want to do the same thing for this side grab it and then go ahead and peel it off and then that will show you the true filter which you could see right here which is a very shiny film compared to this so just note that there is a protective film on there to keep it from scratches all right so now that we got this off to the side we'll put that in probably first you already got the, all the screws we're already at this point so at this point you also want to make sure that your hands are very clean you don't want to have any dirt on it because that could you know smudge the, the filter all right so let's grab our cover put it off to the side and then as you can see here is mine with the red all right so i'm gonna go ahead and remove this and then i'm also going to remove the filter that I have over here which is blue so I'm gonna go ahead right now and remove these two screws okay after removing the two screws that's going to reveal what's behind it and as you can see when I move my the the face of it there is my filter so now I do have the filter attached with some tape so you can see I have a little bit of tape right here and that's holding my filter in place so for the samples that I'll be doing this part's going to stay stock white but I'll be just changing out these filters to show you on what the different colors would look like inverted okay I got the new filter here which which is going to be a believe the hot pink so what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and move this over make sure that we slide it in place right over here make sure that you do it carefully okay, so you pretty much just wanted to get it to fit into that little channel right here okay now that we got it slide over now we're going to grab our base of the gauge and then move this cover this area so right now i'm doing this as samples but for you once you pick the color that you that you like the most you're going to go ahead and put a little piece of tape on the bottom that way it's going to hold the colored filter in its spot but for now i'm just going to put it as a sample for now and put this face of the gauge here we're going to go to the bike and see how it looks so i'm going to go ahead and put the cover over it now and as you can see that's pretty much how it looks from the right now all right so let's go over to the bike and see how this color looks Ooh, that looks really good not a big fan of pink but over here on the bike if you're a female that rides this will be perfect actually it looks really good in person actually so that looked really good the hot pink definitely pops it it looks really good let's go back to the work desk and uh, put another filter in Ooh, that looks really good i like that it's looking really good i actually like it a lot that's definitely uh it's definitely something different for sure all right so now let's go and uh change out the filter we'll see what the, the next color looks like so this is the neon green and this one not looking that great actually all right so here's more of the true color of what i see in real life and eh, in camera looks all right but in real life not my not my particular color but like i said personal preference you know you go through the colors you select the color that you like best and go with it Ooh, that looks really good too okay i would say right about this would be pretty much what i'm looking in real life so it is just a hint of purple which still looks pretty good orange doesn't really look that great actually kind of just looks like a the same almost as the green that we just tested out all right so this is kind of more of true of what i see here with the orange all right let's move on to the next color so that's pretty much how i see it the light pink yeah, it looks all right not bad 
And if you're not wanting the, the hot pink, uh, which has a little bit more pink into it, and you kind of just want a, a tint of pink, I think this will do it. Looks pretty good though. Hmm. Actually, it looks like it's a blue green or something like that. So I would say more like a teal color. So this is pretty much what how I see it. And like I said, not bad. I actually dig the color. Looks pretty good. A mixture between green and blue. All right, guys. Now that you're satisfied with the way the gauge cluster looks, now I'm going to go ahead and put everything back together. So at this point, since you already got all the dust out, you want to make sure that you try to go as fast as you can without getting attracting any more dust onto the gauge cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over. Get your little screws and put those back in their spot. So go ahead and uh, put this one in. I gotta realign the gauge cluster so I can get the screws in there. Sorry, my hands in the way, guys. So now we're just putting everything back together. Okay, so go ahead and uh, put your two screws and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, now that we got our two screws in there, let's go ahead and let's put our cover back on. Uh, not worry about any particles getting in there. Everything is all nice and covered in that area. So let's get our little towel, put it down. Let's go ahead and flip our gauges over. Put our gauge cluster down like so and let's go ahead and, and re-put those two other screws which were located one right over here and one right over here so go ahead and put those two screws back on after that this pretty much is the reverse process just put everything back together so once you're done with that go ahead and get this cover flip it over put it down and then put the remaining screws on okay now that you're done putting all the little tiny screws in its place now we're going to go ahead and grab our bracket and also put that back on so let's go ahead and put the bracket back on and put the screws back on as well okay now that we got our bracket back on all right so now the gauge cluster is ready to go back on the bike and uh everything is pretty much the reverse process from what we did when we took out the gauge cluster okay so next one after we uh made sure that everything is good and the way we like it so now we're going to go ahead and put our gauge cluster on the bracket so let's go ahead and do that move these cables you may not have these cables i just have so much stuff on my bike so i'm gonna put that there and then what you want to do is let me zoom in so you guys can see exactly what i'm talking about okay if you guys see this little hole right here that's going to correspond with this notch right here so you want to make sure you put this hole on top of here go ahead and move this cable and then just go ahead and slide it over like so so it should be like this right on top of it and then you want to do the same thing on the other side okay now that you got them both notched in the right spots now let's go ahead and put your bolt and tighten down the bolts next will be pretty much the the final touches of actually putting everything else back in which is going to be the uh, plastic piece that goes over here on both sides so make sure you put the line them up and make sure you're careful when putting the tabs in here because you definitely don't want to break the tabs when uh, putting them inside so be careful on those two areas so make sure you put one on this side one on the other side and then make sure you put your triangle piece which goes over here once you're done putting your parts in don't forget to put the screws in so one here one over here and those two little plastic ones on the inside so one there and one over there and then your triangle piece don't forget to put the two screws there and then also that little plastic one that goes right over here in this uh, area this little plastic one that goes there on both sides Alrighty guys, so this is going to be pretty much concluding the video. Now if you noticed that when I was putting the gauge cluster back together that I had a red filter, that was because I was doing it for my bike. I was grabbing clips from when I did that install, so that's why you see that particular filter on my gauge cluster. But now you're seeing it as a teal color. Well, I decided to just end the video with the last filter that we were using for this particular video. Well, that's pretty much it for this one. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, smash that like button. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you haven't yet subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. That way you guys are up to date with my latest video. And if you dislike the video, hit the dislike button. Let me know in the comments below of what you disliked about it. And thank you for watching.